one second is defined as 9,192,631,770 oscillations of the casium-133 atom. 60 seconds makes a minute, 60 minutes makes an hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days makes a standard year, 10 years a decade, 10 decades a century, 10 centuries a millennium, and 1 million millennium an eon. That's 1 billion years, a very long time. But how long is forever? And what comes after it? Well, it's infinite, obviously. There's nothing after it, right? Not so. Not only can we go past forever, we can go on for another forever. And another. Welcome to the insanely weird world of infinity. Let's start by counting the amount of numbers there are. Counting the amount of seconds in forever. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 122, 123, 124, 125. 6,542,124,657 6,542,124,657 6,542,124,657 This is taking far too long. But fear not. We can actually count every single number in only one minute using something called a super task. We count to 1 in 30 seconds. Say 2 in 15 seconds, 3 in 7.5 seconds, four and half as much as that, five and half as much as that, and so on. After one minute, we will, theoretically at least, have said every single number in only one minute. We just said every single finite positive integer. Mathematicians call these natural numbers and have a special name for the set of all natural numbers, n. They also have a special name for the size of this set, Aleph Null. Aleph Null can't be any finite positive integer. It can't be any number in here, because if it was, we could just add one and then have another number that needs to be in the set. So Aleph Null must be infinite, our first smallest infinity. It's impossible to overstate how huge this number is compared to any finite. Graham's number, tree three, even Rayo's number, all pale in comparison to Aleph Null. In fact, any number you could think of is closer to zero than Aleph Null. Aleph Null is the amount of seconds in forever. It's also the amount of minutes in forever, the amount of hours in forever, and the amount of eons in forever. Let's say that we're some immortal being who stayed floating around in the universe forever. Aleph null seconds. What if we waited another second? Well, the amount of actual time we've been floating around for hasn't changed. We've still been floating in space for Aleph null seconds. But what if we wanted to label each second in the order that it happened? The first second, second second, third second, and so on. This new second has to be labeled somehow but we've already used literally every single number to label all the previous seconds. We need some new infinity, but of a different kind. Not a cardinal, not a number used to count how many things there are, but an ordinal, a number to label the order of things. This second is labeled with the Greek letter omega. It's important to keep in mind that omega isn't exactly bigger than Aleph. It's just used to label the things that come after it. Wait another second and we get omega plus one. Another second is omega plus two, then omega plus three. We can keep waiting to get to omega plus one billion, omega plus Graham's number, Omega plus tree three. If we wait another forever, then we'd still end up with a total of Aleph null seconds. But now, to label them, we need to go all the way up to Omega plus Omega, or Omega times two. Wait another forever and we get Omega times three. And that's another number we can keep increasing. Wait Aleph Null forevers to end up with Omega times Omega, or Omega to the power of two. Another Aleph Null forevers gets us to Omega cubed. 
weight Aleph null forevers and we get all the way up to Omega to the power of Omega. Omega tetraters to two. Another Aleph null forevers turns it to Omega to the power of Omega to the power of Omega. Omega tetrated to three. Wait Aleph null lots of Aleph null forevers to reach Omega, 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 Omega times. That's Omega tetrated to Omega. This number has a special name. Epsilon naught. Remember, this is still technically the same amount of time as Aleph null, just ordered differently. Epsilon naught can also be defined as the smallest number where Omega to the power of Epsilon naught equals Epsilon naught. What if we wait another Aleph null second? Well, then we'd get to the Epsilon naught plus Omega second. Once we reach Epsilon naught plus Omega tetrated to Omega, that's the same as Epsilon naught plus Epsilon naught, or Epsilon naught times two. Keep adding Epsilon naught. Epsilon naught to the power of Epsilon naught to the power of Epsilon naught infinitely is Epsilon one. We can keep increasing the index of Epsilon. Infinitely nesting Epsilon within itself gives us the Greek letter Zeta zero. Zeta zero to the power of Omega Zeta zeros is Epsilon Zeta zero plus one. Towering an infinite amount of Epsilons above that yields Zeta one. Repeating this infinitely increases the index of Zeta up to Zeta 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 Zeta. Infinitely nesting Zetas eventually gets us to Eta zero. Let's slow down for a minute. We've just been making more and more types of ordinal infinity. But what if we assigned a function to the infinity type, so we can describe any infinity going higher and higher? This can grow much faster, and there is a function like this. It's called the Veblen function, written with Greek letter phi, not to be confused with the golden ratio, which shares the same symbol. So, for example, phi 1 is epsilon 0, phi 2 is zeta 0, and phi 3 brings us up to where we are now with eta 0. But we can now go so much higher. What if we nest the Veblen function? If we infinitely nest the Veblen function within itself, we can reach the incalculably massive infinity known as the Fafferman shoot ordinal. But after this, we hit a wall. We can't talk about any number larger than the Fafferman shoot ordinal, because the Fafferman shoot ordinal is the final destination of our phi function. We've already nested infinitely. Is this the end of the ordinal infinities? No. All we need to do is to invent a new function, the Fafferman shoot function which works by finding more and more ordinals unreachable by phi. With this, we can grow more and more and more. Fafferman shoot, Fafferman shoot infinitely far down. But now we've hit another roadblock. Again, our function has run out. Are we going to have to make a new function every single time we want to break a barrier? Again, no, we can make a function that can go much, much higher. This is called the multivariable Veblen hierarchy, and with this we can write incalculably larger infinities. The Fafferman shoot ordinal can simply be written as phi one zero zero, but we can go far further. Our infinite tower of Fafferman shoots can now be written simply as phi one one zero. Add a fourth variable to reach phi one zero zero zero, and the Ackerman ordinal, an ordinal so big it has no symbol. The first number bigger than infinitely many variables inside of our Veblen function is the small Veblen ordinal. We're getting to another ceiling now. Our Veblen function can only have infinite variables, but there are ways to force past this barrier too. 
Unfortunately, infinite ordinals from this point don't have standard notation, and we end up with lots of different functions, often using the Greek letter psi, which are all competing with each other. I won't go any farther than this for the ordinals in this video, but if you're interested, I would recommend checking out the Googleology wiki. Now, let's go back to our old friend, Aleph Null. Remember, all of these crazy ordinal numbers aren't really bigger than Aleph Null. But are there any infinities that are? Well, try this. Label every ordinal we've seen so far. Every number used to describe the order in which Aleph Null things occur. There must be an ordinal to label the final Aleph Null ordinal. But that ordinal can't be written within the Aleph Null ordinals. Otherwise, there would need to be another ordinal to describe it. This means that this new ordinal must describe more things than Aleph Null. This number is called Omega 1. Since it can't be describing Aleph Null, we've just found a cardinal larger than Aleph Null. This new number is called Aleph 1. If we go far enough, we'll eventually reach Omega 2. We can keep going. Infinitely nesting, Alephs and Omegas like nesting dolls can get us higher and higher and higher. But there might be an infinity. So huge, so utterly gargantuan, that you could never, ever, ever reach it, no matter how high we climbed. An inaccessible cardinal. We could simply never reach an inaccessible cardinal. It's too big.